Hello and welcome to the new video lesson of our course and in this video I'll tell you about the WordPress interface and I'll also tell you about some basic common mistakes that newbies do and how to avoid them and you'll also do some settings which are to be done on WordPress for better results. So first of all you can see your dashboard here. So it contains the basic information about your website like site health status, quick draft, at a glance, WordPress news and events, activity. You can sort these in the way you like by just clicking on the heading and dragging and dropping it wherever you'd like. Dashboard contains the basic information about your website. Below dashboard you'll see updates bar. Here you'll see all updates which are pending like if WordPress update is pending you'll see there if any theme update is pending you'll also get a notification there and you can see like you have the latest version of WordPress future security updates will be automatically applied if you need to reinstall the version you can do so here and you can see like the following themes have new versions available and if I click here update themes it will automatically update my themes so this page makes easy to organize themes plugins and everything so the next page you can see is the posts page by default WordPress gives you two different ways to create content posts and pages to make your site more user friendly it's important that you properly use posts and pages when you add new content. But when you're just getting started, it can be difficult to know when you should use a post and when should you use a page. To help you understand which one is right for each piece of content, I'm going to cover the difference between WordPress posts versus pages in detail. So. Here's the big difference between WordPress posts and pages. WordPress posts have an official published date and are displayed by date on your site's blog page. If you want to write a normal blog post, you should use a post. For example, the content you're reading. Here you will see all posts that you have published what comments, engagements they have got, the date they were published. You can see the categories and you can categorize them in different orders. Like if they are blog posts, you can set them as blog posts, review posts or anything like that. Now the next section is the add new section. Here you can add a new blog post by using the WordPress blog editor. Here you can see welcome to the blog editor. You have to just go through it and then you'll get options like add a title and now start writing. So I'll explain these in detail and we'll not be using the WordPress block editor. We'll be using Elementor for all these purposes. After that, you'll see categories. So you can assign different categories to different things. Like if you uh, have a niche of mobile items or a tech. So you can have different categories like there you can make a category for mobile phones. There you can make a category for computers, laptops. So it makes easy for people to filter out results. So that is what is the significance of categories. Let's move ahead to tags. Tags are the names given to different posts. Tags are one of the predefined taxonomies in WordPress. User can add tags to their WordPress posts along with categories. However, category may cover a broad range of topics. Tags are smaller in scope and focus to specific topics. Think of them as keywords used for topics discussed in a particular post. Our next tab is the media tab. Here 
all the media items that you have uploaded to your WordPress website will be shown. I'll show you how you can do this in the future videos. The next is your pages tab. Here you can add new pages like home page, sample page and many other pages like this. And you don't have to be confused between pages and posts. By default, WordPress gives you two different ways to create content, posts and pages. To make your site look more user friendly, it's important that you properly use posts and pages when you add new content. But when you're just getting started, it can be difficult to know when you should use a post and when you should use a page. To help you understand which one is the right for each piece of content, I am going to cover the difference between WordPress post versus pages in detail here. So, here's the big difference between WordPress posts and pages. WordPress posts have an official publish date and are displayed by date on your site's blog page. If you want to write a normal blog post, you should use a post. WordPress pages do not have a published date and are meant for static, timeless content. Two common examples of your content that should be a page are your site's contact or about pages. It doesn't make sense to list that content by date because you want people to always be able to see it no matter when they visit your site. If you want to see an example of a WordPress page, here it is. Like if I open this sample page, you can see this is the content on the sample page, which you can also open by going on the domain. Now, as we have understood the difference, let's move ahead and see the comment section. Here you can see all the comments received by your uh, posts, received on your post and you can approve them, delete them or I'll also tell you some plugins which you can use to filter out the spam comments. Here is the appearance section which is very important. Here you can go and edit your themes, you can customize themes, you can use new themes. Like you can see 2020 is the active theme right now but I can change it to something very good, which I'll do in the future videos. Here you can see customize, where you can use codes to customize everything, or you can go to your website, add the fav icons and everything, which I'll also show you in the future videos. Here you can see you can change the site identity, colors, theme options, cover templates, background images, menus, widgets, home page settings and you can add some custom CSS codes here. Let's move back. And the next option you can see is the widgets option. It gets it gives you the option to add some features to your footers, sidebars and any other items like you can see here is the footer one and if I add the categories option here it will be displayed on my website so it's very easy to set up I'll also show you how to use them in the next future videos here's the menus option you can create new menus the next option is the background option. From here, you can take a background image for your website due to which the texturing and everything of your website will look great. For now, I am leaving it as it is. And the next is the theme editor. Here you can learn to code and if you know how to code, you can edit the style sheet, functions and everything 
but we'll not be touching this in this course as I'll do everything without a single line of code. Next are plugins. So let me tell you what plugins are. A plugin is a piece of software containing a group of functions that can be added to a WordPress website. They can extend functionality or add new features to your WordPress websites. WordPress plugins are written in the PHP programming language and integrate seamlessly with WordPress. Here you can see the plugins you have already installed and if you want to add new plugins, you can hover and click here on the add new button. I'll tell you what are the essential plugins in the upcoming videos and here is the plugin editor which you can use to just tweak in the plugins and add some lines of code to it and make it a custom plugin too. Here you can add users like if you are hiring someone to write blog posts for you you can add a user and give him a role of an editor. So he can come to your website, he can write blog posts for you. So this is easy. The next section is the tools section. Here you can see available tools, import, export, site health, export personal data or erase personal data. You don't have to do much with it but to just give you a definition. These are some tools which will help you to back up your website, migrate your website and things like that. Last but not the least is the settings section. It contains seven different sections which have different settings and you can go and tweak in the settings. Here you can see the site title and everything about your website. Here it contains the general settings about your website. The next is the writing section. You can see here default post category can be chosen, default post format can be chosen and many things like that. The next is the reading section. So here if your website is in development, many newbies what they do is they don't use this option that discourage search engines from indexing this site. If your website is in development, you should definitely choose this option as for the time being right now, any errors or anything can go wrong with your website. So for right now, you will discourage the search engines to rank your website anywhere. So I definitely recommend you to go and check this section in the reading call. Now the next is the discussion tab and before that click on save changes. Now let's go ahead to the discussion tab. Here you can see default post settings, other comment settings, email me whenever or comment moderation before a comment appears and many things like that. You can use default avatars. The next is the media section. Here you can choose the thumbnail size, medium, large and many things like that. You don't have to tweak here. You can just leave it to the default. And the main thing comes here. So here I would recommend you to choose a permalink like this, the post name. As if you choose it to be numeric, month and name, day and name or plane, it would contain a lot of numbers and Google is less likely to rank your numbers or dates but it's more likely to rank you if it contains the post name like if you are posting six best tools on Amazon. So it will be more likely to be ranked on Amazon rather than the date on which it was published on. I hope you understand it and after clicking on the post name permalink, you have to go and save changes. A permalink is the link that is after the sub after the domain of your website. Like the domain of my website is bestamazingsales.com and after that is the permalink. 
write if my blog title is six best tools for Amazon, the six best tools for Amazon will be displayed here. And the last section is privacy section. Here you can create your privacy policy page or you can use the existing page. So this was it for the WordPress dashboard and the basic settings. I'll meet you in the next video telling you about the advantages of using WordPress.